few of you have written in talking about locks that have ball bearings uh, at, uh, in the key pins. And the only one I have in my collection where I have that is this old Corbin. Uh, might be a little bit hard to see. See if I can shine a light down in here. I think, I think you can see the first ball bearing, maybe the first two inside of there. I hope if the focus is right. But this old Corbin, the reason that they put these uh, ball bearings in these locks is because it reduces the friction between the key and the key pins and therefore it'll last longer. So if you have an apartment building or you know, a door with a lot of traffic, uh, you, won't, you reduce that friction and your keys and your locks are going to last a lot longer. This is, it's only a five pinner, but as I said, it's the only one I have in the collection here that has ball bearings today. It does work. And this lock is probably, let me clamp that just a little better. This lock is probably, I don't know, 40 or 50 years old. So let's see if we can't pick it. Now, I'm going to, um, I'll tell you, the Corbins are manufactured with pretty high level of precision. These are, these really are super locks, and that, that explains why I've kept this one. Uh, they're not an easy pick because you have to keep very, very light tension, and they, the precision on the pins, it has to be just right. There's no slop in these, so it's not like picking a master lock. So, light tension, I'm on the last pin, pin 5, and I'm just kind of feeling if I'm getting some resistance, and I am. Okay, I'm not going to push my luck. I'm just going to keep moving down the stack. I'm going to move to pin 4. I don't know if you saw, I got just the tiniest of rotations there. Uh, these Corbins usually have security pins in them, and I'm not getting any feedback back there. So, we probably did not set those all the way, but we're getting there. So let me keep feeling, looking for some kind of feedback. If there's a lot of precision in the manufacture of a lock, the amount of feedback you get will be much reduced. The greater precision, the less feedback. And I don't know if you can see that tension wrench just barely moving. And that's because I'm on pin one and he's giving me some feedback. So let me see if I can, rather than try to put him in place with this tin foil pick. This is a 15,000. I'm going to use exactly the same pick except the thicker version. This is 25,000. So that way I can maybe put a little more leverage on him. But not too much. I don't want to overset him. Okay, just light pressure, upwards pressure on the pin and then I'm going to wiggle it to keep it on the ball bearing. That's the tricky part. And I'm going to release pressure with my left thumb and there we go. So we got a fault set, so we set him. And let's just keep moving down the stack, see what else we can find. Okay, looks like pin two, giving me the same story, same tiny feedback. So let's get him, and then we'll go to the back and clean those up. So again, stay on the ball bearing. That's the hard part with these locks. And there we got him. Let's check one and make sure he's in place. Looks like one jumped down, so we're going to set him again. Well, there was an open. Okay, well, I thought for sure we had pin, at least pin 5 to reset, but I guess we got him set the first time. So that tells us the first, first two pins are probably security pins. Third pin, I can't tell you, but probably pin 4 and pin 5 are probably standard pins. That's my guess. Let's make a fool of me. Let's find out. Let's go ahead and cut this thing. Okay, we will let me turn this down so we can get a good view. And let's be careful with the ball bearings in this thing. Okay, I have never opened this lock, so give me a second here. <clears throat> Things are tight. It looked like that one was rusted in place. follower. Is that right? All right, we get to use the large follower. All right. All right, I did uh, I did relock it, so let's put the key in. Get this thing oriented. 
Try not to drop any ball bearings. Okay, let's dump them and there will be ball bearings on the very bottom of at least pin one, but probably more than that. Come on out of there. Nope. Okay, pin three does have a ball bearing. There he is. Try not to lose these things. Because you don't see them very... See how it's flat on the end? Let me get that to focus. When you pull it out and the key pin is flat on the end like that one, it tells you there's probably a ball bearing behind it. And there it is, and he just fell out right there. And the last one... you know. So the first three have ball bearings. For some reason, pin four and five have no ball bearings. That's the way it goes. Okay, let's see what we got up inside of here now. Oops, put this down so you can see it. Okay, we had a spool. Another spool. Oh, three was a spool, not a regular. Sorry about that. Miscalled that one. A spool, so he was not a regular pin either. And we do have one regular pin, one standard. So there you go. I didn't call that one very well, but uh, we did have one standard. We had a spool, 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 and spool. On the lower pins, we only had three ball bearings. And so you see we got the, the they are all flat. Oops, I don't know where he went. Only the first three had the ball bearings, and then uh, these are actually normal, looks like normal key pins on number four and five. Anyway, there you go. The, uh, the Corbin. Picked and gutted. Thanks for your time. Stay safe. Stay legal.